Alright guys, um, can somebody turn off the second light switch please? Thank you. Alright, so yesterday we went through and we drew all of our shapes. Remember it was very important that you got everything in the correct size ratio. What do I mean by size ratio? Again? What was size ratio? Uh, making sure everything was the same. Make sure everything related to one another the same as it did the photo. <coughs> so making sure that your cube wasn't bigger than all of your shapes or that your sphere wasn't too big. You want to try to get as close as the shade ratio as, or the shape ratio as you can. So now we are going through and we are shading. And then what pencil are we starting with shading wise? 2H. We're starting with our 2H. Why are we starting with our 2H? It's the lightest. Remember on the front of your bag it's labeled from darkest to lightest. Darkest is 6B, lightest is 4H. Yes. And if one of our shapes are too small, do we have to erase and redraw it? I would redraw it just so that way it's a little easier for you to shape. You can't. What? Um, you can't redraw it. Like you shaded it, you did the shadow, and you realize, hey, that shape is too small and that shadow makes no sense. It's called an eraser. Why does it you oh, burn. an eraser and it smudges everything up because that's what's going to happen? Do the best you can. All right, so again, we're starting with our 2H, and we're shading from that light to dark. Use your photo as a reference. Look at your light source. Your light source is responsible for all of your shadows. So without that light source, it's not going to make much sense. So all I'm doing is I'm going through and I'm shading all my lighter areas first. Then I will go back through and start shading my darker areas with my HB, my 2B, my 4B, 6B. Why am I waiting to do those dark values last? What? Yes, it is easier to go from light to dark than darker to light. Also, if you have too much graphite on your paper at once, what's going to happen? Smudge. Yes, smudge it across your paper. Okay, also remember, keep something under your hand while you're shading so that way you don't smear your paper. And then keep your photo as a reference. I want everybody to be looking at their picture while they're shading. Don't just shade these however you want. You need to shade them like you see them. You need to train your brain to shade or to draw what you see, not what you think you see. We're using our 2H right now to shade with. Remember to take your blending tools and blend out your values. That's going to take all those scratchy looking pencil lines away as long as you're not pushing really hard with your pencil. If you get smudges somewhere, take your eraser and clean those smudges up as you go because it's going to be a lot less cleanup than you're going to have at the end. And I know a couple of you have missed quite a few classes. Some of you have just came in recently. Get on my Google Classroom and watch those demo videos. You don't necessarily have to do the project if you just transferred in. But at least take your pencils and practice your different values. Maybe draw just part of the project just to practice your shading technique. Because we're going to be shading a lot. So I want you guys to have a good foundation of 
the shading before we get too far into the semester. Especially if we end up going remote, you guys having this background information, I'm going to assign drawing projects. I'll do demos for you guys, for those of you that have internet access. If you don't have internet access, then I will make handouts for you. But it's a lot easier with the videos. So I'll probably give you guys the rest of the hour to work on this shading practice. Then tomorrow we'll move on to the next still life. Which is cups. Mm -hmm. Take the hall pass, please. Yep, I have stacked a bunch of cups. I've hot glued them so that way they're in an interesting composition. You guys pick which composition you want. And then you guys are going to draw and shade the cups. You're going to use actual everyday objects. We're just going to be stepping up in this process so that way you guys get more comfortable with our shading. Remember, if you're right-handed, you're working left to right. If you're left-handed, you're working right to left to keep you from smudging everything. So if you guys look up at the screen, all I'm doing right now is I'm shading all my lighter areas first before I switch to a darker pencil. If you need a ruler, if you're still drawing out your shapes, you guys may borrow a ruler. As I'm shading any of those contour lines we drew to trace out our shadows, I'm actually erasing those if they're too dark, so that way I can shade over them. Okay, whoever's phone it was, please just turn it off and put it away. Don't forget your background and your table that is part of your composition. Don't just leave it blank. Add some shading. That's why we're practicing. Guys, remember, don't let any of your eraser shavings get underneath your paper. Because that's going to cause little black marks.
And remember to use that sandpaper to clean off your shading tools as needed. Okay. So I've got the cone going. I'm starting in with my darker shades. But you can see how things are starting to turn three dimensional. We're going away from that contour concept and we're adding 3D. Okay. 